Hello and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I'm Naja Atsutijani. Thanks for joining us. Issues relating to ways and means of unlocking development opportunities through financial inclusion dominated discussions when President Mohamed Buhari held a bilateral engagement with the Queen of the Netherlands, Maxima Zorieta. The meeting was held on the margins of the ongoing 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York. State House correspondent Adam Usambo reports. The Queen of the Netherlands is the United Nations Secretary General's Special Advocate for Inclusive Finance for Development. She is the leading global voice on advancing universal access to and responsible usage of affordable, effective, and safe financial services. The Queen's engagement with President Muhammad Buhari centered on enabling responsible technology for financial inclusion across Nigeria towards achieving sustainable growth and development. It, it is about getting a large percentage uh, of our country, not just in the urban areas, but throughout the country, uh, to plug in uh, to the digital highway, uh, really, uh, as it is, and so that all activities um, will be done uh, digitally. Investors will then also come in, you know, in the various sectors when you have this uh, easier mode of transacting uh, business. And that will also help the government in uh, revenue, um, you know, generation. So clearly, Mr. President uh, can see the, um, the, the, the real value uh, that, this will, uh, that this will add. The Queen of the Netherlands, whose last visit to Nigeria was in 2017, told President Muhammad Buhari that she is already engaging with stakeholders in different sectors of the nation's economy, describing their responsive disposition as gladdening. Mr. President, um, you know, promised that um, they, they we're going to do even more uh, in, in the country to put in place that well, digital uh, uh, infrastructure. And it'll impact on so many different sectors, you know, be it insurance, uh, health, agriculture. And um, here you will need the CBN, uh, governor has to be very much engaged, and of course a minister uh, of finance. And, um, you know, the point was made that if you have that, uh, it'll put, uh, uh, add 10% uh, to GDP uh, of a country. President Muhammad Buhari also granted audience to the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Nigeria's Amina Muhammad. Their discussions held behind closed doors were, however, not made public. From New York, Adam Usambu, NTA News. Similarly, the Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro has sent a high-powered delegation for talks with Nigeria on various aspects to improve the aviation sector and the economy, particularly in oil and gas resources. Foreign desk correspondent Usman Aliu reports that the delegation met the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Onyema, in New York. Foreign Affairs Minister of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, his deputy and the country's envoy in the United Nations visited. And the bilateral talks centered on continuing agenda set up by the OPEC Secretary General, Nigeria's Nusibar Kindo, on global market and value for the oil and gas resources. Nigeria's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Onyama, hinted the delegation about commitments by the federal government at the moment to build infrastructure for development while confronting various challenges of peace, security and stability in Nigeria and West Africa. There were also talks on review of bilateral deals on air transportation, agriculture and education, and the formation of the first Nigeria and Venezuela Joint Commission in 2022. As part of the New York engagements, Minister of Foreign Affairs Jeffrey Onyama paid a visit to the United Nations Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed. From New York, Usman Aliu, NTA News. Meanwhile, the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly regards violence against children as one of the biggest threats to their rights and privileges. And participants are now exploring ways to strengthen the system of protecting children against violence in times of crisis. Charles Alpha reports. The 76th United Nations General Assembly identifies economic, 
geopolitical and climate crisis, and only recently, the global health emergency as potential threats to the rights of children. Addressing the problems, the session drew world leaders' attention to the negative effects of increased violence on the behavioral pattern and future of the child. The impact of child abuse, sexual harassment, and violence against children in times of crisis, the summit anticipated is unlikely to end as the coronavirus recedes, but it is exploring ways of strengthening the system of protection for children. We know that poverty inequalities are drivers of violence and exploitation of children. This is highly alarming. We must do more to protect our children now and also in the future. We have to make sure that there would be effective and efficient regulations to prevent children and families uh, from becoming victims of harassment, uh, sexual propaganda or uh, dissemination of extremist views Leaders also looked at the most effective ways to respond and advocate an inclusive, resilient and sustainable recovery with children at its center. Charles Alpha, NTN News. Back home in Nigeria, the federal government says it remains committed to ensuring peaceful coexistence among all Nigerians for sustainable development and will welcome international partnership for peace for peace. The secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, stated this when he received the International Association of World Peace Advocates, led by President Ambassador Per Staffson in Abuja. Mitairi Ikben reports. The International Association of World Peace Advocates is affiliated to the United Nations Global Compact. Its delegation from Denmark is at the presidency to partner with the Nigerian government in promoting peace in all local government areas in the country, in line with its global mandate. The association seeks to achieve its mission by engaging youths to reduce unemployment, poverty and restiveness. Presently, we have decided to visit some states in Nigeria. This, of course, we need your involvement to making it possible. These states include Plateau, Bono, Samfara, Yobe, Imo, Ebony, Katina, Kaduna, and River State. Welcoming the delegation on behalf of President Buhari, SGF boss Mustafa expressed the resolve of the federal government to tackle all threats to peace in Nigeria, whether they emanate from within or outside the country. The recent developments across the globe uh, uh, has threatened uh, the peace and quiet of our nation. But uh, from what you uh, must have seen, uh, that the, the government is in place in everything needed to ensure that peace and peaceful coexistence becomes a hallmark of our administration so that we can provide for the people of Nigeria the good things that they rightly deserve. The SGF advised the World Peace Advocates to work with the Institute for Peace and Conflict Resolution in executing its programs in the country. In Abuja, Mitaire, Ikben, NTA News. Worried about the recurring incidents of leakage of classified security documents, the House of Representatives has resolved to investigate the matter. Adopting the motion by Representative Samuel Adejari during plenary Thursday, House members acknowledged federal government's efforts to tackle insecurity but decried leakage of classified security documents. The lawmakers also noted that such leakages jeopardize the fight against insurgency, banditry, kidnapping and other crimes in the country. The House therefore mandated the Committee on National Security and Intelligence to investigate and report back on the matter within two weeks for further legislative action. We'll now join Lagos for all the latest and Michael is our guide. Ajatu. The alleged age limitation placed on entry into public and private secondary schools by the Lagos State Government has generated different reactions from government and stakeholders in the education sector. In the support, our correspondent examines the proposal and the necessary factors required to find an balance. The textile industry. Desires to effectively implement the national policy on education 
The Lagos State Government in 2020 contemplated the idea of pegging the entry age of students into public and private secondary schools at 12 years. With the takeoff of a new academic calendar, there are speculations in the social media space that a time for implementation is here. My first daughter entered almost 10 years to a unity school and I know what she suffered, it was not easy. Bertrand's experience with his daughter is pathetic, but points to the fundamental place of psychomotor and cognitive development of the child's brain to cope with the intensity of work at a secondary level. It is a thought key players say should be given due consideration, provided documentation and statistics show that underage students are poor academically. There is a growing rate of deviance, of juvenile delinquency and deviance, and we would expect that Students that have actually gone through proper processes of cognitive, affective, and psychomotor development may not become victims of this, you know, deviant growth, deviant behavior. Others say implementing such proposal requires finding a balance in order not to promote redundancy. That might be what we call low enrollment for early education, low enrollment at the early stage of their lives. So parents may decide to to wait to when that child is of age. The chairman of the Lagos State Universal Basic Education Board, while explaining that government has shaped the plan, insists on the indispensability of age to compression and the overall development of the child. Children are grouped based on their age in order to determine uh, age-specific enrollment ratio. Whatever side of the pendulum the discussion sways, what is important here, according to stakeholders, is that there must be attempts towards the implementation of the education policy for the sake of developing a complete child academically. A Lagos High Court sitting in Ikeja has admitted into evidence documents obtained by the EFCC from Petroleum Product Price Regulatory Agency, PPPRA, banks and other relevant maritime agencies in the ongoing petroleum subsidy claim fraud brought against Nadabo Energy Oil Limited. The document we attended as evidenced by the chairman of the EFCC, Abrazak Bawa, when it took the weakness box in court, Adeni Taiwo reports. EFCC Chairman Abdurashid Bawa was the lead investigating officer in the petroleum subsidy claim fraud suit instituted against Narabo Energy Oil Limited by the agency for allegedly obtaining the sum of 1.4 billion naira from the federal government using forged documents. Taking his turn in the witness box as the star prosecution witness, the anti graft agency chairman led in evidence by counsel to the FCC, Seidu Ate, told the court that letters of complaints written to the commission by the then Minister of Petroleum, Dizani Alice Madweke, and civil society organizations led to the setting up of special teams to investigate subsidy claim fraud. He said copies of documents tendered by the defendants for the purpose of benefiting from fair subsidy claim and others obtained from the Petroleum Product Price Regulatory Agency, PPPRA, showed that Nadabo Energy Limited imported 12,000 metric tons of PMS into the country with a total claim of 1.4 billion naira. Evidence obtained from bill of lading, pro forma invoice, ship-to-ship -ship log, and insurance company record by the commission are presented as exhibit before the court, however, shows that only 6,000 metric tons of PMS was imported by the defendant. Of course, that is what we are telling the court, that uh, he obtained uh, allegedly by false pretenses, by the forged documents, uh, about uh, 760 million uh, naira. Several attempts by the defense counsel to stop the document from being admitted as exhibit, citing non-compliance with provisions of Evidence Act 2011, were rejected by the presiding judge, Justice Senator Ogusoya, who wrote that the documents were properly obtained. Further hearing into the matter has been adjourned. In Lagos, Adini Itaewo, NTA News. That's a contribution from Lagos. Time now for a break. But when we turn, Meduguri is Makodi rather. Makodi rather is our next stop where Fatima Hazan is standing by. The federal government has commenced the second phase of COVID-19 vaccination. If you are 18 years and above and unvaccinated, register at www.nphcda.vaccination.gov.ng. 
visit the nearest vaccination site to receive AstraZeneca or Moderna COVID-19 vaccine as first dose. If you received your first dose of AstraZeneca vaccine before 8th July, get your second dose now. All COVID-19 vaccines are free and certified safe. At the vaccination site, you can check blood pressure and know your diabetes risk status. Children aged 0 to 23 months will receive childhood vaccines and screened for malnutrition. After vaccination, continue to adhere to COVID-19 prevention protocols. For more information, visit www.nphcda.gov.ng or call 0700-220-1122. This message is from the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. Fatima School Utako is a Catholic school with a blend of British and Nigerian curriculum. Our vision is providing holistic education. Teachers are focused to bring out the best in each and every one of us. We are trained to be first class citizens. Our skilled teachers are innovative and very passionate. Fatima School is currently admitting children for 2021-2022 academic session into early years and primary school from ages 2 to 10. The first 20 parents to purchase a form will be entitled to a good discount. Anyone that recommends Fatima School will also be given an attractive gift. Number 21, TOS Benson Crescent, Utako Abuja. Telephone 0809-9615-090. Fatima School Utako, providing holistic education for excellence, godliness, and service. Come, join us today. Title chasing, Manchester United will have to overcome one more hurdle when they welcome Aston Villa to Old Trafford. Will it continue to be their theatre of dreams or can Aston Villa throw a spanner in their work? This Saturday, it's Manchester United versus Aston Villa on the Premier League Live, showing on the network service of the NTA from 12pm. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Baba Ijebu and powered by Integral. And welcome to Makudi. In line with the federal government's commitment to strengthen education at the basic level through capacity building, it has commenced training for education secretaries for all local government councils in the country so as to revive and improve teaching and learning. Aliu Tijani Mohammed reports that the Universal Basic Education Commission, UBEC, is facilitating the three-day training. From 774 local councils in Nigeria, the education secretaries converge on Lafia, natural state, to learn new ideas that will address challenges of basic education. Considering their role as implementers of education policies at the third tier of government, the Universal Basic Education Commission said retraining and training is necessary to build a solid foundation for the education system in the country. We shall continue to initiate programs that will be of immense benefit to the Nigerian Nigerian children, our teachers and education managers, and the entire nation. Minister of Education Adamu Adamu, represented, stressed the commitment of the federal government in reviving the fallen standard of education, especially in public schools through reforms and investment that will increase school enrollment. The training being flagged off today will undoubtedly enhance the Education Secretary's capacity to perform their duty and improve school 
effectiveness. For the government of Nassau State, allocating highest budgetary provision to the education sector this year, government said further demonstrate its commitment to bequeath the younger generation a sound education system. This training workshop is considered critical as it will equip you with technical know-how in achieving the goals of the sector. The three-day training has as its team improving the capacity of education secretaries for school effectiveness. In Lafia, Ali Utijen Mohamed, NTA News. As part of commitment of the international community in consistently tackling other life-threatening diseases besides the COVID-19 pandemic, the United States Embassy is partnering with the Taraba State Government in the fight against HIV-AIDS. Correspondent Joseph Zana Gambo has the details. This high-level advocacy meeting between the Taraba State Government and the United States Embassy and Partners was an instance of Governor Darius Dixon Ishaku. Stakeholders during the meeting examined the achievement, challenges and way forward towards changing the narrative in efforts to contain HIV AIDS prevalence in Taraba State. I want to assure you that in Taraba State, we will continue to fully to ensure that in the next four or five years, we don't have HIV in any percent. Charge the affairs of the United States Embassy in Nigeria, Caitlin Fitzgibbon announced reactivation of HIV AIDS assistance to Taraba State government. With these state level engagements, we have been able to break down those barriers. We're counting on you and Taraba over the next few years to help us not only break down those barriers, we're looking at reaching Director General, National Agency for the Control of HIV AIDS, Dr. Gambo Aliu, who commended the state government for reducing its HIV AIDS prevalence from 10.5% in 2012 to 2.9% in 2018, called for more funding and partnership in eradicating the epidemic. Your ability to train traditional bad actors to attend to the rural areas give us hope. The United States Embassy and its team are expected to visit some health facilities during its two-day tour of the state. In Jalingu, Joseph Zanagambu, NTA News. That's it from Makudi. Nationwide continues in Abuja with Najatu. Thank you, Fatima. Still talking health, a new report by the United Nations Development Program, UNDP Nigeria, and the National Bureau of Statistics indicate that 20% of the full-time workforce in Nigeria lost employment due to the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. Neka Oko reports. This is the first comprehensive survey to specifically investigate the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on business enterprises in Nigeria. This survey revealed that 81% of enterprises experienced a decline in revenue during the global pandemic, while 73% faced liquidity challenges. So the median loss in revenue uh, reported remained at 44% in comparison to what we had in 2019. Similarly, close to 60% of enterprises surveyed experienced an increase in operational costs. The impact and the recovery of these losses is expected to be uneven for businesses across operating models and sectors. The report is also a testament of the strength and innovation and the resilience of those making up the backbone of the Nigerian economy. The report believed that business enterprises can increase their resilience through diversification and increased investment in Abuja. Neka Uko, NTA News.
The All Progressives Congress has rescheduled its nationwide state congresses to Saturday, 16th October 2021. In a statement, John James Apanudoedehe, the National Secretary, APC Caretaker and Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee, indicates an updated, updated timetable rather of activities and guidelines for the conduct of the state congresses will be released to the public in due course. And up next is our Port Harcourt Network Center with more on Nationwide. And we will be rejoining, we will join our Port Harcourt Network Center much later in the course of the bulletin. Improved healthcare, qualitative education and inclusion in governance are the demands of persons with hearing impairment as they commemorate the 2021 International Day of the Deaf. Elizabeth Omorui, who had a chat with this group, reports that the protection of their fundamental human rights is top on their demands. Amina Ahmed is 43 and a mother of four. She has hearing impairment, living with the condition she says is challenging. Before I explain my sickness to the doctor, he, he has already finished writing drugs for me, which is very, very wrong. This forum is one of such platforms created to address her needs and issues bothering on licensing of sign language interpreter, as well as effective legislation to help persons with disability better communicate with their environment. Providing information that is accessible for the deaf, especially during the COVID-19 era, that till date we don't have a single deaf person that has come up with COVID-19. They advocate the preservation of sign language as part of linguistics cultural diversity. In another development, the management of the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities is also partnering the Center for Ability Rehabilitation and Empowerment to enable persons with disability access basic needs at the airports. As soon as this project is initiated, we are partnering together to see to the success of this project. The commission will make sure that we make budgetary allocation to support this project. With the grant, we will do a lot of advocacy too. The initiative also helped on the provision of help desks at the airports to assist persons with disabilities when traveling. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NC News. With me in the studio are two gentlemen, Haruna Ahmed, the Vice Chairman, Nigeria National Association of the Deaf. Also in the studio is Timothy Tinat, the President, Sign Language Interpreters, Nigeria. Thanks for coming. Thank you. And today is the International Day mm -hmm. of sign language right. i hope i got that right yes. <laughs> thank you so f judging from that report we've just watched the need for legislation which compels offices to provide desks to serve people living with hearing impairment is obvious what efforts have been made in this regard yes he can sign and then you'll interpret all right, thank you so much. Um, I want to thank you for giving us this opportunity on this special day. The International Day of Sign Language, our language, which is our language right, our language uh, right of dignity and pride. This bridge the gap of communication between the deaf community and the general society. So far, the Nigerian National Association of Deaf has been advocating for making sure that persons with uh, deafness have access to information on equal basis with others and also uh, ensure that uh, sign languages also are also part of our government systems to make sure that there are access to all information of relevance. For example, in NTA itself that we are having that experience and which they are implementing. So we want to thank the Honorable Minister of Information for giving us that opportunity for us to be here. It's very, very important. It shows that he has interest and he has heart for the deaf people and also he respects the rights of uh, the deaf to language. Thank you so much. So, the, you know, those are some very important points he raised there. I'm glad to 
hear him say that the NTA is making an impact on the deaf community. Now, to interact with the deaf, uh, the interpreter, such as yourself, plays a very important role. Now, how do you assess the competence of interpreters to build relations with society? Uh, well, thank you so much, and that's why our partnership with the deaf community is very, very important, because right now, sign language interpreting is a new profession. And because it's a new profession, we don't really have it in our institution of learning. And uh, the only people that really justify or certify our qualification are the people that are the users of the, the, the beneficiaries of the language, which is the deaf community. So they are the only people that can be able to see and say who is truly an interpreter and needs to be used as interpreter at all sectors. So the deaf community are the only basis for us to be certified or to be recognized at a moment until we have the education program for sign language interpreters integrated into our educational system. Then we'll get a certificate or license of practice. Uh, thank you very much for sharing that. But this year's theme is We Sign for Human Rights. Where is Nigeria in terms of the protection of the rights of the hearing impaired? Well, um, first of all, I want to thank His Excellency, the President, President Buhari, for giving us the opportunity and giving us the freedom and giving us the independence. At least we've been fighting for disability rights for a very long time. And the president came and recognized that right and signed a disability law into act. Now, we have an act. It is need for us to have a policy, a policy that will advocate for this right and give us more privileges in the society. The National Commission of Persons with Disabilities on Ground, which is given the rights to protect uh, persons with disability and promote everything that has to do with them. So because of that, it will go a long way in promoting everything we have to do as well as deaf people. So thank you very much for sharing all this with us. It's been a very interesting session, and I would have loved to ask you more questions, but we'll have to stop for stop. now. Yeah, thank you so much. We must teach sign language and learn sign language. We will sign, all of us, together. We, together with you. We, we love, love, love uh, our, our country. country. Country? Nigeria. This is God. N, Nigeria. Yes, God, God. bless, bless. Uh, Nigeria. Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and now we'll join our Potaka Network Center. <laughs> Thank you. So the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has been charged to demonstrate fairness and morality as an election umpire while executing its responsibility. Cross River State Governor Professor Ben Ayade gave the charge during the familiarization visit of the new state resident electoral commissioner, Dr. Cyril Omorogbe, to the governor's office in Calabar. Paul Ibe reports. Since gaining independence in 1960, has been faced with several challenges, but not without progress in many sectors. With that optimism of a better Nigeria, the Cross River State Governor is hopeful that the country will remain one indivisible entity come 2023, as INEC plays by the rules to boost the confidence of Nigerians while exercising their franchise. I'm just telling Nigerians there is hope. Let's not just give up. There's really hope. Nobody will feel a sense of frustration more than myself. The unity of this country remains strong, and we must. And we must go through 2023 in peace. And that's what I preach. The INEC REC informs the governor on the update of the CVRO exercise and pleads with government for support in information dissemination to arrest voter apathy. I invite you, you know, please, you know, His Excellency, to give us that support in thinking of reaching out to the people. Uh, make sure we uh, lay, put to fear most of those voter apathy. We are fears when it comes to registration. I understand. Uh, even when I was in Bayelsa, the average Nigerian nowadays will tell you 
Dr. Cyril Omorube resumed at Rec Cross River State on Monday, 28th September 2021. In Calabar, Paul Abel, NTA News. The Nigerian Customs Service Area 2 Command in One River State has taken delivery of a mobile cargo scanning machine to enhance container examination at the ports. Area Commander Hawa Muhammad says the mobile scanner will help increase turnover in revenue. Robinson Director has details. The Nigerian Customs Service Area 2 Command in One Port is the first to receive the mobile cargo scanning machine capable of examining over 200 containers daily as against the manual scanning of just about 100. The cumbersome process of offloading a container for examination will now give way to a non-intrusive examination conducted with the use of X-ray. The command is optimistic that the new technology will not only facilitate trade but also enhance security and increase revenue generation. We are hoping that uh, the turnover of our examination will be high and by so doing we will collect more revenue and by the time we further stabilize we are going to run two shifts, both day and night shift. So we are looking forward to, three, to, to between three to four hundred containers being examined within 24 hours every day. The installation process is ongoing at the moment while custom officers in charge of scanning operation are to undergo refresher training on the use of the new technology. In Portacourt, Robinson Deratayde, NTA News. That's a bit from Port Harcourt Nationwide continues in Abuja after the break. The Chief Resident Engineer and Project Supervisor of the Second Niger Bridge Project. The Second Niger Bridge Project is uh, a project that has been conceived for a very long time, but it has finally come to life during this uh, present uh, administration. This project uh, has a lot of uh, socio-economic benefits and it has impact positively on the lives of the host communities, both in Anambra State and Delta State. The people are very happy. The host communities, they partnered with us because uh, apart from uh, the social benefits Indigenes are also employed on this project. Uh, we can see how their lives are being improved. This message is from the Federal Minister of Information and Culture. I did enjoy Nollywood film, Orisu, PBO, AMC. Be my best channel. But ST Nollywood Plus, they show the latest Nollywood blockbuster on top classic bouquet. How I want to take watch them. By beginning, they enjoy five children's channels. About to work on our dream works on top of I be telling novella lover, and I like ST Novella E and Starlight. But I hear say this series on ST Novella E Plus on top classic bouquet. The tutorial person passed waiting I did see now. And I won't watch them. She I go need pay 800 naira extra. From September 1, start time, the summer you better package. But no fear, we know increased price. Join this offer. Make basic bouquet subscribers. Just pay for one month and they go fit to watch three Ogonga extra channels from Classic Bouquet. This I will never finish. Oh, recharge Classic or Super Bouquet for one month and you fit to be one of the 400 lucky people. Them, we go win smartphone. Terms and conditions, they shall. More value, same price. Star Times, enjoy digital life. A new edition of TV Guide is out exclusively with Governor Simon Lalong of Plateau State. Since assuming office, our rescue administration has pursued the path of peace and reconciliation and restored confidence among people of different ethnic, religious, and political persuasions. Peace is back on the plateau. We are building world-class infrastructure in roads and opening up opportunities for innovation. The edition is a compendium of mind-blowing stories for your reading pleasure ranging from entertainment, economy, sports, media, politics, family, and lots more. Pick up a copy and keep abreast with issues and trending features within our space. TV Guide, very incisive, very educative and competitive. Grab a copy at the vendor near you or any NTA station nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. 
title chasing, Manchester United will have to overcome one more hurdle when they welcome Aston Villa to Old Trafford. Will it continue to be their theatre of dreams or can Aston Villa throw a spanner in their works? This Saturday, it's Manchester United versus Aston Villa on the Premier League Live, showing on the network service of the NTA from 12pm. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Baba Ijebu and powered by Integral. Thanks for staying tuned. The federal government has constituted an interministerial committee for the recovery of illegally refined petroleum products in pits dug around the creeks of the Niger Delta in a move which is expected to take to preserve the environment while also generating revenue for the country. Femi Okeo has the details. Apart from the heavy pollution which illegal oil refineries constitute for the oil producing areas, Nigeria also loses millions of dollars of revenue in the process. Legally refined petroleum products. Now the federal government wants to turn the tide through the inauguration of an interministerial committee which is saddled with the responsibility to dictate, report, evacuate and ensure the transparent disposal of the illegally refined oil products. Solicitor General of the Federation, while inaugurating the committee on behalf of the Attorney General of the Federation, said both the local communities and Nigeria as a whole will benefit from the mop-up exercise. I wish to employ members of the committee to work as a formidable team in accordance, in accordance with the extant laws and regulations. The interministerial committee, which will be coordinated by the Ministry of Justice, has representatives from the Defense Headquarters, Nigerian Army, Navy, Civil Defense, NMPC, and the Ministry of Environment. In Abuja, Femi Okewo, NTA News. Compliance with the time frame for nationwide implementation of speed limit device by motorists is gradually gathering momentum from stakeholders with a renewed drive to achieving minimum carnage on the nation's highways at a time when the Federal Road Safety Corps is also taking proactive measures to ensure zero auto crash during the last quarter of 2021. Abu Bakar Usman Akwanga reports. Estimated vehicle population in Nigeria as at 2018 is put at 11,760,871. And as the number increases, mobility becomes an everyday necessity for human survival. Casualties are likely to occur, but measures like speed limit device are expected to minimize risk of avoidable fatalities. Fleet operators who refuse to allow certification team to assess their premises will be prosecuted. Fleet operators who fail to meet certification standard twice will be suspended from operation. Everywhere in the world, those who transport goods or transport people have the larger propensity to cause injury and fatalities. Some vendors connive with some fleet operators and do some sharp practices. Federal Road Safety Corps says the standard practice guiding road worthiness and boarding of vehicles will not be compromised as it progresses with its campaign into the last quarter of 2021. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTA News. And for similar reports and more, let's join Salamatu in Kaduna. You, Naja Atu, and a warm welcome. Towards minimizing road crashes, the Kaduna State Government has inaugurated a high-powered road safety advisory council with a mandate to employ modern techniques in reducing carnage on the roads. The state governor, Nasser Ahmad Erufai, gave the mandate at the inauguration of the council. Muhammad Umar Ajingi reports. Road safety data indicate that more than 1.2 million people die on the roads across the world annually, while tens of millions are seriously injured, making road crashes the fifth major cause of death among youths with Kaduna State having its own share. This necessitates the constitution of the state Road Safety Advisory Council, 
which is to, among other things, come up with the best safety strategies towards minimizing road crashes. And there is no one here, I'm sure, that has not lost a loved one to road accidents. These crashes take a tremendous toll on the economy. Each year, developing countries lose between 1 and 3 percent of their gross domestic product due to medical costs, productivity losses, and other expenses resulting from deaths and injuries on the road. Kaduna State is making giant strides. I was reliably informed and taken around by my good friend, the Corps Marshal of Castleville, to the proposed computerized vehicle inspection centers. Part of the strategies to be adopted by the Council is to improve road infrastructure, implement best road traffic laws and enforcement, while encouraging good road use behavior. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umarajingi, NTA News. Moving from road matters, more than 3,000 additional beneficiaries of the federal government's household uplifting program have received their pay in Kaduna State. Suleiman Abdullahi Riga Chukung reports that the latest beneficiaries are in Chukung local government, bringing the total disbursement in the area under the program to about 90 million naira. When I started getting this money, I don't collect credit again. I use the money to go and buy. If I sell finish, I will use that money again to go to the market and buy. It has helped me a lot. With that spirit of prudent management of resources, Christy Musa built this house and run a small business that takes care of her basic needs using proceeds realized from the federal government household uplifting program. Christy has been a beneficiary of the program since 2017. Like Christy, Messi Irimia and Halima Yushau also depend on the program for their small-scale businesses. I use the money for important things through my business so that I can take care of my children because I find myself in a situation that as a young person, I became a widow. Joseph Jatou is the monitoring and evaluation officer of the household uplifting program in Kaduna State. We've seen how some of the beneficiaries started. Today, even we, when we see them, we appreciate them. We've seen how some started from nothing. Some we are encouraged to start uh, small savings. And uh, we can see that there is improvement. As cash disbursement continues, more beneficiaries like Christy hope to narrate better tales of personal and family prosperity. Suleiman Abdullah Hirigachikung, NTA News. And Suleiman's report ends our package from Kaduna. Back to you, Naja Atu. Good evening. Good evening and thank you, Salama Atu. Following the collapse of a building in Akure, which claimed one life, officials of the Undo State Ministry of Physical Planning and Urban Development have sealed off the building and marked it for demolition. Olubukola Aduo, who visited the scene of the incident, reports that the owner of the building has also been arrested. Residents of Fanibi Streets and Environs woke up to the disturbing news of the collapse of this story building, which claimed the life of an aged woman and left several, including children, injured. Those people that are living in the backyard, the backyard. So when you know, we called the police and the, our neighbor in the environment did not came and rescued them. But fortunately, out of one family, we lost only one woman here. The collapsed building was an attachment to the main building built over 70 years ago. Looking at this building, you can see that there is no column, which people normally refer to as pillar, that is holding the building, that is carrying the load. The whole thing is just a block load-bearing structure. The owner of the building has been arrested by the police for interrogation. We take statements, then uh, we do a little investigation, and if we have anything criminal, we do the needful. The remains of the disease have been deposited at the mortuary, while those injured are receiving treatment at an undisclosed hospital in Akure, Olubukola, Aduo, NTN. Dynamics, the Director General of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, says the dynamics of disaster occurrence across the globe requires the deployment of world-class facilities to manage such devastation. This was while interacting with NEMA staff at the Lagos Regional Office. Ilyasu Aliyakubu reports. 
The Lagos Regional Office of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, is one of the strategic offices of the agency that has been battling with a series of disasters ranging from floods, pipeline vandalism, tanker and gas explosion, building collapse, as well as fire disaster. In view of these enormous tasks confronting the Lagos office of the agency, the DG NEMA, soon after inspecting facilities, said more needs to be done for the agency to be able to face the current challenges in the region. While appreciating the doggedness and commitment of the staff, Mustafa Habib said hard work does not go unrewarded. I've already given the go ahead. Some vehicles will be improved on. We need some equipment. We are, we are working on the internet provider and everything to make sure we are connected directly between uh, the headquarters and Lagos Territorial Office. The DG had earlier interacted with the staff where issues of welfare and conducive office accommodation were deliberated upon. From Lagos, Ilyasu Aliaku, NTA News. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya, says the Army will spare no effort in dealing decisively with bandits and other criminal elements threatening the security of the country. This was during his operational visit to the 35 Artillery Brigade of the Nigerian Army at Belkuta, Okun State. Yemi Dalemo reports. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yaya, says he's in Ogun State to assert the operational readiness of the personnel at the 35 Artillery Brigade at Lamala Abelkuta in tackling insecurity in the country. Interacting with officers and men of the command, the Army boss who have unprofessionalism, patriotism, and dedication to duties also stressed the need for effective synergy with other security agencies to overcome security challenges. We will improve the security situation of the country across the nation entirely, whether you are talking about northeast, northwest, north central, south east, south south, southwest, all. We had discussion about how we can improve the security in the state. And you cannot underestimate the kind of collaboration that's come with not only with the military but all the other armed forces. The army chief was also at the palace of Alaki of Eba land of Baadidotun Aremumbadebo where he solicited support of real fathers towards ensuring peace and security in the country. In Abelkuta, Yemi Dalimo, NT News. And up next is sports update with Ima, with Kene Ima Abodike. <laughs> Again with basketball, where the Tigresses of Nigeria remain in firm contention for FIBA Women's Afro Basket Championship title defense, following their 70 to 56 points victory over Kildivar in one of the quarterfinal fixtures on Thursday in Yaoundé, Cameroon. So Ibekwe on the other end gets it to Kalu Makale, who is automatic in that low post. The Tigresses will go into the semi finals with three wins in three matches, are bidding to become the first team to win the championship thrice. In in a row since Senegal conquered Africa from 1974 to 1984. Ahead of the September 30th, 2021 National Sports Federation's elections in Abuja, some of the federations have concluded elections of athletes and technical representatives into the board as a prelude. Correspondent Olaleko Kelajolu, who monitored some of the proceedings in Abuja, reports that majority of the old guards returned unopposed. I just want to put up a legacy that a federation such as basketball should not be down. I know the problems that we're facing and I will try my possible best. In football, 35 selected international referees and accompanying elite referees are participating in a four-day FIFA member association course in Abuja. The course is designed to equip the participants with current development and changes in the rules of football officiating. Nigerian referees did a big performance because uh, we have 99% of success. What they rated the performance of a referee is correct and we have to thank the federation for giving all the necessary support to develop our referee up to that level. The course will end on Friday, September 24, 2021. With sports update, Kenan Ima Aborike, NTN News. 
And sports update concludes the news on Nationwide. Remember to stand with the NTA in the fight against rape and rapists. And remember to interact with some hearing impaired persons today. Remember, God bless Nigeria. The One Stop Information Center. Real news at your fingertip. Be the first to report by uploading first hand information on the U Report link. And be the first to know by simply clicking on any of the links on the sidebar for headlines, domestic and foreign news, economy, security, politics, sports, and more. Stream live on your smartphone and tablets and stay connected. It's pretty easy. Simply download NTA News app from your Google Play Store and you're good to go. NTN News Mobile App, your access to real-time